Before we begin with the fundamental theorem, we have to present a new way of defining functions. Let f of t be continuous and A be some fixed constant. then f of x, capital F of x, equals the integral from a to x, f of t dt is a function. What does this function mean? How does it work? Well, let's look at an example. Say f of t equals t squared. And we can let A be zero. So we've got this function, capital F of X equals the integral from zero to X of T squared DT. This function represents cumulative area. So, for example, f of two, the integral from zero to two of t squared dt. The integral from 0 to 2 of t squared dt is the area under the t squared curve. f of 3, the integral from 0 to 3 of t squared dt is also an area under a curve, but now you're going from zero to three instead of zero to two. And in general, F of K is the area under the curve T squared on the interval from zero to K. 
here. And we have defined a function like this. This might seem like a pretty awkward way to define a function. And it's unfortunately true that we can't really give good applications of this because to do so would require background in other branches of mathematics. However, there are major functions functions that are defined this way. For example, if you go on to take a statistics course, you might see the so-called error function. And the error function is defined in this way. And as I say, it's kind of an unfortunate fact. I mean, because calculus is probably the first college level math class that most of you are taking, we can't really go into applications that require a background in statistics or a background ground in other areas. I can only try to assure you that functions defined in this way do show up and are important. And if we believe that, we might ask, well, how do we do a calculus with them? In particular, we might ask, what's the derivative of a function defined that way? And the fundamental theorem contains within it the answer to that question.